I talk about the events at Dover, which I think myself are very, very important. Now, admittedly, I'm an optimist, otherwise I wouldn't have been 40 years in this business, more or less, more or less non-stop, without a break, if you see what I mean, week, week, no, no stopping for 40 years. Um, because I'm an optimist, and I know that the white man's going to sort this trash out. And by trash, I mean that trash at Westminster, yeah, that trash at Westminster. However, before I talk about Dover, I would like to say how pleased I was and how proud I was to take part in this demonstration last month at Trafalgar Square, just beside St Martin's in the Build Church, to mark and commemorate the bloody murder of British soldiers and British officials committed by Jewish Zionist terrorists um, at the end of the Second World War. Um, this magazine here, which I've got a copy of, Heritage and Destiny, Destiny gives a, an account of our excellent um, demonstration at Trafalgar Square. Then there was a meeting afterwards. I know that a lot of you were there, and I was very pleased. It was a, it was a, an idea of genius, I will say, to go back to those events and to remind everybody that the state of Israel was born in the blood of British soldiers, and that's all been whitewashed. By, whitewashed by the, the trash and traitors who run this country, but I will tell you, one of our roles in this business is to be the conscience and the voice of the people. And although they keep slapping us down, one thinks of the little boy in uh, Hans Christian Andersen's story, the king, the emperor with no clothes, right? But mummy, the king's got no clothes on. Quiet, Johnny. But mummy, quiet, Johnny. Poor little devil was slapped round the ear hole, but eventually everybody takes it up. And I see that as our role. Yeah. The role of the little boy just speaking the truth, which is obvious to everybody, but nobody says it. So, I will say this demonstration that we organised, that some do, an idea of genius which we implemented by supporting it, that there's absolutely no reason why we should be in awe of the Jews, and the fact is, we owe the Jews nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was the great <laughs> And that, and that was the basis of our demonstration the other month. Um, as for Dover, yes, uh, the National Front um, liaising politically cleverly with other patriotic groups. Um, there was about a dozen different groups, um, come mostly from London but also from our parts of Britain. We went down to Dover because Dover is clearly the entry point for that lot over there at Calais. There's at least 10, 20,000 over at Calais. All sorts of criminals, child molesters, terrorists, freeloaders, a, a good 20,000 foreigners over there at Calais and everybody in Britain knows now that that 20,000, including the criminals, the child molesters, the terrorists, that the free handout merchants, Every single one will be let into this country. How do I know that? How do we all know that? Because the Tory government, Cameron's Tory government, is letting in 300,000 a year. 10,000 at Calais, that small chain. When the weather gets a bit um, nastier and people forget about it, that over there will be let in. Um, yes, of course, the establishment used every little trick to try and thwart us. They, we were told by the authorities that we had a certain rendezvous point, a car park, to line up, and that we all made for the car park. And then, and I have no doubt this comes from a, an office not far from here, um, an order was given to the local constabulary to hand over our assembly point to the to a red mob. They all turned up. Look, I think it's absolutely disgraceful and disgusting the way that these lefties are allowed to wear these Masks across their faces, Absolutely. hoods over yeah. and dark, and they all turn up in black. It's and a staves. uniform of fun. And, and staves, some of them. Yeah, we'll and staves. And there were no arrests yeah. made. So that red mob was given our RV point. It then gave us problems because we were then in three different groups, we were all making for the RV, and there's all the red, so we were separated. But um, I will just um, say that the march took place, and I will say that British manhood and British resolve won the day. And it was very, very satisfying. It was very, very satisfying to be there. Um, doubly satisfying. It was, double, it was satisfying that we managed 
What am I making a fist for? <laughs> one way or the other, one way or the other, we, the march took place. And I think, I don't want to speak too much out of turn here, but I think the police were, at a certain point, friendly to us, I would say. I think the police on the ground looked at the red mob, all masked up like gangsters, bank robbers, in that ghastly black uniform they all wear, with, all with scarves across their faces, hoods right down, dark glasses, the whole lot of them. Vile looking creatures, all probably come from Brighton University, I should imagine. The police looked at them and looked at our British lads and, a, and some lasses and there were some women there and they decided to, you know, whatever, whatever. Anyway, um, I will say something further here. I was talking to various people on the march and I was talking to various people after the march and I think, I told you I'm an optimist, but I think something significant is taking place now. Um, I was put it in two halves. I think with everybody in Europe viewing these mobs, it's an invasion, isn't it? It's not, it's not immigration, it's an invasion. I think everybody in Europe, including Britain, looking at the television, but even more so looking at the internet, when you see these mobs are storming across, has got the idea now that this invasion is being enabled, being enabled by the powers that be. The, 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 the Merkels, the Hollands and the Camerons, for whatever reason, whatever dark and dirty secrets they've got, are willing this, that they are the puppets of a system, puppets of a system that wants to destroy us and just flood us with, with, the, with the third world millions. And I think now that that's clear. And I will say, I'll add a bit now, I walked down memory lane here, Martin Webster, our guest who spoke this uh, in the first half, was talking about the National Front of the 1970s, which I'm very, very pleased to be a member of, because the fact is, this movement now comes out of the National Front of the 1970s. Everything that we do, including the fact that a lot of us know each other, comes out of that National Front 1970s. Um, and what, what gave rise to the National Front and made it a national organisation of a tremendous name, and as Martin Webster said, the tremendous opposition that's put up against us, was the I'm taking you back 40 years now, the Ugandan, Asian, the Ugandan Asians. You had these Asians in East Africa, in, in Uganda, Tanganyika and Kenya. They had no right to come to Britain. They were, they were Indian citizens. They had been part of the British Empire. They were shopkeepers in East Asia. And the, the Ugandans wanted the Asians to go back to Asia, which is very, one understands. One understands that the people of East Africa, the Kenyans and the Ugandans, wanted these Asian shopkeepers to go back to um, um, uh, in India, Asia, because the Africans, you know, capable of running shops and so complete. Now, Ted Heath had won the 1970. I'm knowing. I'm going back 40 odd years now. Some of us were there. This is the roots of nationalism. This is how we are where we are now. In 1970, there was concern about immigration, and Ted Heath won the general election and got himself elected to number 10 Downing Street by going to the people in that trick which we know the Tories have won every general election for the last 50 years by going to the electorate and saying, we're going to stop immigration, vote for us and we'll stop immigration. And people were so green in 1970, they voted for Teddy as Prime Minister on the promise that he would stop immigration. You will remember, two years before, Powell had spoken and said, the British people, this country must be mad to let all these third world is into this country. The, the Britain is piling up, piling up its own funeral pyre. There will be enormous problems with immigration and crime in the years to come. Powell opened the doors for the National Front. Powell spoke in 68. Ted Heath got elected on the words of Powell. And then two years later, Ted Heath let these Asians in. Asians, completely alien, had nothing to do with Britain whatsoever, were citizens of India, and the British people in their heart and soul, understood in a, their eyes open, they understood that by letting those Asians in from East Africa, they were, that Ted Heath and the system and the establishment was opening the doors to Asia. I tell you, to the younger people in this room, it may possibly surprise you, that there was a time in this country when news agents and little, little grocery corner shops were run by British people. <laughs> British people. Well, British people. And when the hospitals, the doctors and the nurses were British people. Who changed that? Ted Heath. And by, with the Ugandan Asian crisis, that was the beginning of the National Front. Now, when I was at Dover, 
I, I had this sort of view because, because, because we only won at Dover. We only won at Dover because there was such spirit amongst the people in our ranks. We were kettled in at one stage. The Reds were down the road. There were loads of police and we were kettled in. We pulled that march off and got to the Eastern Docks, which is where the site we were aiming for, because of a spirit the British people would not allow themselves to be said no to. And I thought even then, and I spoke to somebody in this room, I exchanged emails with somebody who knows who was around in those years of um, the Ugandan Asians, and he said to me, I was amazed, great minds think alike, the parallel is with the Ugandan Asian crisis. Now that changed politics in Britain forever. You then had a party and a movement, which is still 40 years later, um, okay, 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 UKIP's now got the votes at the moment. But that, we made that vote. That, that changed British politics. The advent, the fact that British people saw themselves being deceived by the establishment in 72, having voted for Teddy two years earlier. I think now that you're going to see this right across Europe, maybe in the US of A, where Trump is doing very, very well, campaigning against Mexican immigration, you may, follow it. You may well be following that. Uh, but here in Europe, in, when I say Europe, I mean Britain as well, uh, I think that, that uh, I think, I told you I'm an optimist, but I believe I'm a realist as well. I think that um, we will yet live to see changes. If you allow, would you let me say one more thing? Yeah, yeah sure. I'd like to say something else. It's a bit of a tangent, really, and it's this. I'm in contact with Germany. I was in Germany. Like last week, like two days ago, I was in Dover. The week before that, I was haranguing the masses of um, Eastern Germany. Blimey, do I get around. All in German, of course. All in German. As one does, of course. One likes to, you know. Audience is always right. Anyway, anyway. I'm in contact with these German nationalists who are no fools. And I'm saying to them, because I'm trying to educate them, actually. They're a bit depressed, understandably. I said, look. You don't want this refugee problem. Merkel talked about having a million in. She then watered it down to 800,000. You don't, there, there are, are, you travel on public transport in Germany. There are arrogant foreigners everywhere. Do they give it the big one as they walk down the train? Do they give it the big one? Um, anyway, I said to these German nationalists, you're concerned about this, this immigration problem, these refugees. What refugees, I said, refugees are caused by wars. It's war. Wars cause, cause refugees. These wars that these refugees are fleeing, look, I'm looking at it from a lefty liberal point of view. You've got to do that. You've got to think, how can you talk to these daft, sentimental, brainwashed millions outside this wonderful room of our wonderful selves, right? How can you get through to these people? They're sentimental and all the rest of it. So I said to my German nationals, what you've got to do is Refugees are caused by wars. Who causes all these wars? Who causes the, the ongoing war in Syria? Who's destroyed Iraq? Who's destroyed Libya? Not least the dangerous war in Ukraine. I said, wars are caused by... Refugees are caused by wars. Wars are caused by NATO and the Americans. And the fact is, I'm going to conclude now, we all know, since we're all right-wingers and nationalists, that all those governments in Eastern Europe were propped up. The communist government of East Germany, Poland, Hungary were propped up by the Red Army. Who props up this crowd of creeps and traitors over here? Who, crop, who props up Merkel, Hollande and Cameron? The United States. We have to say as nationalists, I'm putting this to you now, I know I've gone off track a bit but this is the way my mind works. We nationalists should say to the Americans, thank you very much Americans, but the time has come to go home. We don't. Marine Le Pen has got the top votes in France by saying that the Americans are dragging France and Europe into a war with Russia, which we don't need. Who wants a war with Russia? The Americans might if they want to snooker our little game, but nobody, in, nobody, none of us should want a war with Russia. And Marine Le Pen is leading the way by saying that. And we should lead the, lead the you haven't got to be rude to the Americans, just say thank you very much, we don't need. I, one other thing. The name John Tyndall has been mentioned this now. We're all entitled to our opinions, but I'd just like to remind you one of the things that John Tyndall said. Back in 1986,
when Maggie Thatcher was Prime Minister, she brought out an Act of Parliament in 1986 that said that in an emergency, which they never define, of course, in an emergency, the American armed forces in this country can play a key role in, uh, in making sure that certain facilities, telephone exchanges, BBC, are guarded from a possible insurrectional mob. Now, there were two people who spoke up against this. One was from the left was Tony Benn, who said what Maggie Thatcher means is, is that when we left-wingers come to power, the American army is here to stop the takeover. And the other man who said it in his wonderful magazine, which is a wonderful magazine, we've heard the very beginnings of the magazine, um, wonderful magazine, um, John Tyndall said in Spearhead in 1986, that's aimed at us. When us nationalists come to power, the American army is there to thwart us. Look, no self-respecting nation allows foreign troops. Those bases are regarded as American sovereign territory. You can't go on them without their permission. Lake and Heath and all this. So, listen, as the Chinese in their wisdom say, we live in interesting time. Stick with it, friends. Stick with it. Thank you very much.